Numbers. This video is going to be a very short introduction to number types in Python. Python abstracts a lot of this stuff from you so that you don't have to understand like granular basic computer science stuff. But you should still understand that. This is not an excuse to not learn that. It's simply something you can use to avoid learning that until later. The way that Python handles numbers is mostly very intuitive. It allows you to uh, pretty much turn your computer into a very powerful, overpriced, fancy calculator, which is really all your computer is. Let's get a Python shell here by opening the REPL with Python or Python 3, whatever it takes for you to get a Python 3 interpreter open. And let's talk quickly about some basic number stuff. So basic arithmetic is possible, as I hope uh, you have already figured out. So if I type in 1 plus 2, I get 3. You might be surprised if I type in 3 plus 4, I actually get... No, I'm just kidding. It's just 7. You can use other operators, not just the plus sign, obviously. You can multiply 3 times 4. You can use exponents, 3 to the 4th. You can divide 3 by 4. And here's where we see our second type of number. This is a floating point number. It's got a decimal point in here. Python will pretty much intuitively switch between these as needed. Python 2 was pretty bad about that, so that you could make bizarre mistakes as a beginner if you didn't like memorize how Python did integer division and that kind of thing. But Python 3 is really good about just kind of working the way you expect it to. PEMDAS applies the order of operations, so parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. That's the order in which calculations are done. So if you've got a complex calculation, you can affect the order of operations by adding parens. Basic arithmetic stuff works as expected. There are some unexpected things just because of how computers work, and you should be slightly aware of them. If I, for example, do 0.1 plus 0.2, we all know that that's 0.30000 of R4, right? Soon as we buy into the cult of the machine, we're just like them. No. So this is an artifact of how computers do math in base 10, which is the math, the number system we use. Computers use a different system called base 2 or binary, and that is binary code. Computers can only work with ones and zeros, and there is some limit to how precise they can be based on that, and that's why you get these really strange artifacts where this is, at its most basic level, a wrong answer. This is wrong. But it's so slightly wrong that you can get away with it, and the entire world gets away with it on a regular basis. You can just round this down, you can pretty much work with this how you would expect to work with it, and get answers that make sense. Only when you need extremely high precision numbers, like you're starting a space program, you are in control of an airliner's systems, that's when you start to need higher precision because you really don't want to make any mistakes. The way you'll be using numbers, you can just use Python 3 number types without knowing much about them. The only thing that is going to come up is that you're going to want to print the answer to something, and the way it's going to happen is you're going to say print the answer to your question is you put a space because you now know that you need a space at the end to make sure you've got a space in your output. And then you're going to get this error. Well, what happened? I totally did it right. I concatenated together this string with this number. Well, those are two types that you can't concatenate together. If you've got just numbers, you can do it. So obviously 8 plus 8 works. And if you've got one string plus another string. That works just fine. But crossing types, you know, you can't cross the streams. If you've never heard that, you should definitely memorize that and carry it with you through life. Don't cross the streams. If you try to concatenate together or use the plus operator across signs, you're going to need to do what's called uh, casting, type casting. You're going to need to cast one type as another, which just means convert it as best you can. Please, Python, don't be mean to me. So the way we do that is there's a function built in called 
str, which stands for string. There's a function that's called int, which stands for integer, or number, the simplest number type. And we're going to practice casting back and forth between them. So I now have a program here with two types of this bug. It's the same class of bug. It's this incorrect type being used bug. Both of these need a cast to make this work. So let's just go ahead and run it and see where we crash. Well, on line six right here, I'm trying to use years as a string by concatenating it together with other strings. It's the exact same error we just saw. So the way that we cast this to a string is either we can say years equals string years. And what that's going to do is assign, reassign years from this to a stringified version of that, which you can see by saying, uh, let's say years equals eight. String years is the string eight. Now that can be concatenated together with other strings. And if we want to capture that, we simply say, you know, my var equals that. And so now my var is a string eight and we can go on. So here, years points to a number. Here, years points to a string, a stringified version of that number. And line seven should succeed now. So if we rerun our program, this works just fine. Now here <laughs> is an excellent bug. This fails silently. You can see our program did its thing and even exited with a status of zero meaning no problems encountered, everything's good here, but everything is not good here because we have gotten some very bizarre things happening inside of Python. Let's have a look. We'll paste this in one at a time. How many equals eight, and then six times eight equals, <laughs> if you saw the last video, you know what's coming. <laughs> eight, 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 eight. <laughs> yeah, that's six times eight. Six times the string eight. What we actually want is to cast this as an integer using the int function. So int is a function that takes a string and it returns an integer. That return is going to be pointed at or captured, hate saying captured, by how many? And that shows you the other way of doing this. So you could create a variable, then remap the variable to a changed version of itself or you can just do it right in the beginning. I could have just said stir eight, and then I wouldn't have to do this. Just showing you both ways of doing it. So now, how many is eight? And we, we, this is what we should have done. We should have printed how many, but then it wouldn't have failed silently and you would have seen right away, which almost never happens with bugs. You, you discover these things silently lurking for months and you're like, God, how do I never test this? So now, wow, I just, wow, this is actually what I wanted to print. I really apologize for those of you following along at home. Okay, so now when we run this, Unaco's existed for eight years. It's a little long. I think it's a little newer than that, but, and now six times eight is 48. This is returning what we expect now. And here's the interesting thing. This proves, because this returns a number type, this returns an integer, that print will print both strings and integers. It has no problem printing other types. It's just that this plus operation on strings, if you're plussing anything with a string, Python knows that's string concatenation. So that's only gonna work with other strings and it will no longer automatically try to cast something to a string for you. You've got to do that explicitly. That's our quick introduction to numbers and the way that you're going to be dealing with them primarily for your first probably six months of programming. So I hope that's been helpful. And in the next video, we're going to look at a very exciting and powerful data structure, namely lists, the Python list, the almighty Python list. It's going to be freaking incredible. If this has been helpful, remember to like and subscribe, comment if you've got any questions. A lot of this stuff is kind of tough to teach because some people understand you know, the first bit faster, others understand the second bit faster. So there's almost no way to make a perfect video for everyone. So please don't feel stupid. Just post questions 
in the comments below and I'll try to get them answered or the community will answer them hopefully. So I'll see you guys in the next video.